Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to Guns N' Roses album ranking. So the band formed in 1985 and since that time they've only released six studio albums. Uh, but with GNR having just released its first new music in 13 years called Absurd, I thought let's revisit each album and count it down. But before we start with that, if you are new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please click the button. Also leave a comment, hit like, all those things help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, by subscribing, as an added bonus, you'll be able to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music, just like this with Guns N' Roses, album ranking so six albums to go through coming in at number six we've got gnr lies 1988 uh, second studio album from them and yes the whole thing is studio I'll get to that in just a minute it's comprised of two eps the first being live like a suicide which is from 1986 which was recorded in the studio then they added in live audience sound to make it sound live Ah, so you didn't know that. Uh, second EP on here was four newer songs done acoustically. The album is good for what it is and what it was meant to be, which is a stopgap order or album uh, to tide fans over until, uh, you know, an album of new material could be released. So um, the live album on here, though, is too raw for me, uh, at least by comparison to the acoustic recordings of 1988. And of the eight songs here, uh, two of these are covers, Nice Boys, Mama Ken, and then you got one re-recording from Appetite, You're Crazy. So in all, there's only five new songs on here. Uh, don't get me wrong, though. I really do like this album and the recording of it, but in the GNR canon, something had to come in in last place, and it turns out it is GNR Lies. Coming in at number five, we've got The Spaghetti Incident, 1993, fifth studio album by them. Uh, and it is a collection of covers, but only the album to feature Gilby Clark on it, a guitar player who replaced Izzy Stradlin for the Use Your Illusion tour. Uh, despite the opening track coming out of left field and seemingly being out of place in my opinion, the rest of the album on here is very consistent and to me sounds like a GNR album. It's full of energy from top to bottom on it. Um, the studio caliber of this is equivalent to the Use Your Illusion albums. And the band always did great covers. So I think this album here is a testament to that. Again, the album was meant as a stopgap between albums. Um, but no one had any idea at the time that it was going to be 15 years until their next album. Which leads me to the next one that's in here, number four, Chinese Democracy. So six studio album, and by this point only Axl Rose and Dizzy Reed remain from the Use Your Illusion era. Uh, the list of musicians that are on this is far too extensive to go into and to get into as far as this is concerned. Um, but despite this missing the lead guitar work of Slash, I think it's a good album in its own right. Um, it had been 17 years since the Use Your Illusion albums, and the amount of change that occurred within 17 years of time, the musical landscape change, personal growth of its members. Think of somebody aging 17 years and what they go through. Uh, the band members that came and went on this, the historical developments throughout the world, uh, new musical movements and things of that nature, all of these things affected the album. Now, if the band had released an album, say, every four years, they each would have sounded different, and it would have explained how we evolved and got to this point. But instead, we're getting this album here, and it appears to have little in relation to early albums, uh, but I actually think that's not the case, and there's quite a bit that does link it to it, beyond the fact that Axel is still the driving force within the band, and of course, the, the creator of all of this. I think the overall intensity of the album, the lyrical content, song structure, and the musical complexity on the album itself all links and ties it into all of the material that is coming from Guns N' Roses. But what hurt this album here is the overall production on it. There was too much layering, it muddied each song, and it made it hard to focus on one particular part of any given song that's on here. But despite the quality of um, you know, all of that, the material and everything, 
And the fact that the production hurts this here, that is why for me at least, that this album is uh, coming in where it does on the countdown. Coming in at number three, Use Your Illusion 2 from 1991, fourth studio album from the band. Released the same day as Use Your Illusion 1, uh, but as separate albums. So that's why I'm actually ranking these two differently. Uh, the first album, or both of these, the Use Your Illusion 1 and 2, are the first albums that feature Matt Sorum on drums and Dizzy Reed on keyboards. So you had two members for these albums. Um, you know, despite the quality of songs, though, the album does feel more like a collection to me and not an album in its own right. Um, you got Civil War on here, which was from Nobody's Child, and that was a release to benefit Romanian orphans. Knock It On Heaven's Door, which came from the Days of Thunder soundtrack. You Could Be Mine from Terminator 2 soundtrack. Don't Cry had the alternate lyric version on here. My World, which was a rap song. And then Yesterday's, which was a song that was actually premiered during MTV Rockumentary years earlier. So you had all these songs on here that were known from other things coming on the album. The remainder of the songs on this album, though very good, uh, most notably 14 Years, which was sung by Izzy Stradlin, one of the best songs throughout both of the Use Your Illusion albums. And of course, Estranged is on this one here. But in all, I think the album itself, it lacks focus and consistency, and I believe GNR would have been better off had they collected some of these together from like the soundtracks, the Benefit album, uh, cover songs, and released them as a stopgap EP or album to Tide fans over prior to the release of the Huge Illusion album edited down to a single album. I think it would have gone over far better uh, as a whole. Coming in at number two, Huge Illusion 1, also from 1991. It was the third studio album. Of course, released the same day as Huge Illusion 2. And as mentioned before, this album here also featured new members, Matt Sorum on drums and Dizzy Reed on keyboards. Uh, the album here, this one, far more focused and consistent than Use Your Illusion 2. Uh, overall, I think the songs work better together. This one here featured six singles released at the time, all successful to varying degrees. You had Don't Cry, the original version, that's the one that was actually released as the single. November Rain, the epic ballad, and Live and Let Die, the cover of the Paul McCartney Wings song. The rest of the album cuts on here are really strong and I think just as good as the uh, singles that were released on here. You got Bad Obsession, Back Off Bitch, Double Talk and Jive, one of my favorite songs from the Use Your Illusion albums. A number of these songs were from before Appetite, which I think is why this album sounds as good as it does and for me why it's coming in at number two. All right, and I think no surprise here, coming in at number one, Appetite for Destruction, 1987 debut studio album. So released a little fanfare though when it came out. Uh, it took nearly a year before it caught on and became the massive commercial success that we know it as, but rightly so as it's one of the greatest all-time rock albums. In my opinion, the album is blistering from start to finish on it. Each song is good in its own right, uh, not one you know, no one song is repeating on another one here. One of the things I like about this though, um, and I think that makes the album so great, is the complexity of the songs that are here. Where, you know, some songs are seemingly made up of multiple different songs. For example, let's talk about Rocket Queen. So it starts with this down and dirty, hard rocking song in it. And by the end though, it has changed into a melodic, uplifting uh, piece of music. You know, to me, this brings a lot of character and a lot of life to each of the songs that are on this album. You know, it did it with Paradise City. Um, several of the songs do this, and it kind of became a standard amongst uh, Guns N' Roses, one of the things that set them apart. Um, and all being, while keeping each song very interesting, in my opinion, there will never be another rock album like this one made. Um, and it's why, for me, it's the number one GNR album of the ranking that I'm doing here, but also my number one rock album of all time. So hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, don't forget to check the description for links to related videos in particular, like my discussion of the number one rock album of all time. I'm gonna leave that link there for you if you wanna check it out. Um, and certainly if you enjoyed this video, please share it out on social media, help spread the word that way. 
I would also greatly appreciate that. Leave me your comments, let me know your thoughts. I'm sure you guys have some different opinions on what the uh, proper GNR ranking of albums would be. Go ahead, have at it, and have a great day. Take care, bye-bye.